Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the King James version. Please turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 1. The three parts of witnessing, movement, action, and faith. You might be saying, well, movement and action are the same thing, aren't they? Kind of, yes. But who is the one that is, what is the one that is moving when it comes to witnessing? When it comes to witnessing, when it comes to us fulfilling our calling of being ambassadors for Christ, who is the one who's doing the moving? Okay? Hence, in that respect, there is a difference between movement and action. Okay? The thumbnail that you will see for this video, very appropriate. The wind. Moving the sail. Okay. In the description box, there will be a link for the video. Uh, what is the difference between the spirit and soul? Will be very neat for this uh, uh, for this video particularly. Uh, please check out that video uh, if you have any questions about that. But who is the one causing the movement? Who is the one that is moving that would cause in us action? Okay. The purpose of these three videos, uh, there are going to be three videos, Lord willing. One today, Lord willing, on movement. Lord willing, one on Wednesday about action. And Lord willing, the final part, verse uh, part three, verse three, on Friday about faith. This is going to be kind of a mini-series. And the purpose and goal of these videos is to prick you. Because... We run into several people who will say things, well, I haven't been called to make videos, okay? Or I haven't been called to go out and slip tracks in cereal boxes or underneath coffee lids, okay? I haven't been called to do this. I haven't been called to do that, okay? Okay, fine. So what, does that detract from you? Being an ambassador for Christ, witnessing unto lost people. Well, I don't get a chance to speak. Really? Has the Lord opened doors for you and you haven't walked through them? Or, like, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But sometimes with a lot of the lost people that we will encounter, they don't want to hear it, do they? Do they? It's a rarity when you get the chance to be like, okay, here, here, come on. Let me, can I, can I show you? Can I show you what the scriptures say? It's a rarity. It still happens, but it's rare. Most of the time, the witness that you and I are left to is the witness in our actions. Because sometimes... Actions do speak louder than words. Now, this has not, we're not talking about salvation in these videos, okay? This is specifically about being a witness onto the lost. That's specifically about what these videos are about. We, I've heard way too many things from some of the brethren. How they give excuses. Well, I can't do this. I'm not doing this. I, I can't do this. I haven't been called. Okay. But you have to go outside your door every once in a while, right? Right? And when you do, the way you reflect, the way you serve Christ and adhere your life to the scriptures reflects him outside your door. And those people out there who you might not speak to verbally, you can speak to through your actions because you are adhering your life to the scriptures. Okay? But there are still moments when the Lord will open doors for you to be a witness with words. His words. That's the point. These videos, the point is, is to prick you. You might not be called to doing videos. Okay, fine. You might not be called to going out and putting tracks in cereal boxes and coffee cans 
or on the uh, windshield wipers or in uh, car doors or whatever or in gas caps. That's a good way too. That's a good way too. You got to be careful with that one though. But uh, I mean, okay. But there are many other ways. There are so many other ways. Ways that you don't even know of. Ways that you don't even think of. And, and remember. Remember Acts chapter 7. Okay? Remember that audience that saw what Stephen did when they were throwing stones at him. And remember the testimony of Stephen on that one, Saul, who saw all of that. Now granted, what Stephen did in Acts chapter 7 was a combination of both his words and his actions. But nowadays, most of the people don't want to hear the words, do they? So we're left with action, aren't we? Aren't we? But let's talk about movement. Now, like I said, you, you might be like, well, movement and action, they're pretty much the same thing. They are. They are. Movement and action, yes. But... But, who is the one moving? Who is the one moving? Who is the, who, who or what is the wind that is driving the sail? Hmm? That's what we're going to address in this video, Lord willing. Very appropriately, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. Very appropriate, okay? The three parts of witnessing. Genesis chapter 1, the first three verses, where we see the Godhead in action, okay? In the beginning, begins what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? It begins with God. In the beginning, God, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, so it begins with God, okay? God the Father. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S Spirit of God, God himself, moved upon the face of the waters. We talk in depth about these verses, basically, and what is the difference between the soul and the spirit. Like I said, we'll be in the description box, so we're not going to press too hardly on that. But, Spirit of God moved. Moved. It begins first with God, then the Spirit of God, you know, moved. Okay? Moved. Part of the Godhead. Okay? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? That thumbnail, like I said, very neat. And verse 3, and God said, spoke word okay it says god said it doesn't say god's word capital w no but it says god said let there be light and there was light so you see god the father his spirit and his word okay all right you see the godhead here the father the spirit and the word or as first john 5 verse 7 says the father the word and the holy ghost and these three are one. Here it is right here in the first three verses of the scriptures. But now, in context to witnessing, look at these verses. It begins with God. Okay? And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. But the spirit of God moves you. Like I said, you'll, you'll have to watch that video about what is the difference between the soul and the spirit. We, we really get into depth about that in that video. But the spirit of God moves. And in that moving, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay? Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Okay? So the spirit moves. It begins with God. And the Spirit of God, the Lord is that Spirit, the Spirit of our Father, God Himself, moves. And because of that, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. The glorious light of the gospel. Okay? So in the very beginning of Scripture, 
we see not only the Godhead, which is spirit, soul, and body, okay, one God made of spirit, soul, and body, okay, all right, and that body is the Word made flesh, okay, but we also can see this in a con context of how we are to witness of our Lord unto the lost people. Now, more on this of the Spirit moving. Go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Very neat, very appropriate, okay? See, because a lot of these Christians in the buildings, what moves them? Is it the Spirit of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it that they want to, they got to get people churched? Oh, I can tell you how many times I've heard that vomitous phrase. Like uh, here in Woodstock, we still got the farmer's market. Every once in a while, they have this wicked uh, Zion church building thing with these wicked women sitting there playing on their cell phones with a, a prayer station. Okay. And their goal is to get people into a building. Okay. What's moving some of these people? What's moving the Jehos? What's moving the morons? Huh? What's moving some of these Baptists? Is it the Spirit of God? Hmm? Or is it the Spirit of man to get people into a building to, to affect their pocketbook? I wonder. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. In the dispensation under the law, when God was utilizing prophets, okay, Old Testament prophets, okay, different dispensation. But, Jeremiah 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Hmm. Who sent Jeremiah out? The Lord. The book of Acts. Who sent out the apostles? The board of elders? The CEOs of the church building? No. The Lord. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. There are some, especially Calvinists, seem to be uh, culprits at this. They say, well, God doesn't work like that today. That he will not give you words to speak unto other people. Uh, yeah, he has given us his word. Yeah, amen. 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 But it's like they say that other than that, the Lord won't guide your speech in certain, acts, uh, in certain situations. That it won't be a burning in you. To speak certain things. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. To root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant. And skip over here to verses 17 and to verse 19 in Jeremiah chapter 1. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces lest I confound thee before them. All that he commands you. In witnessing, it's like, okay, Lord, You've orchestrated this situation. Give me the words to speak. Okay? And the words that he will give to that, for example, for us, always in the scripture. Always quoting scripture. Okay? He'll guide us in the way we shall speak. Okay? 
certain things to say because he is the wind that's uh, pushing the sail, see? For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. So Jeremiah, well, one second, brethren. Jeremiah was called, and we, as the church of the living God, we are called. You go the way of the cross, the way God has chosen. You go his way to him. You are of the called, okay? You are the called, because he has called you by the way of the cross. And you go that way, you are the called. It's not this satanic, elect and non-elect that Calvinism teaches and the black Hebrew Israelites teach. It's nothing like that, okay? It's nothing like that. You go the way of the cross, you are of the call because he has called you through the way of the cross, see? Okay? Okay? And he is the one that will orchestrate true witnessing opportunities which are glory unto him and not to you. And not to you. Because go to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Okay? Psalm 39. Psalm 39, verses 1 on to verse 4. I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Amen. Verse 2. I was dumb with silence. Dumb means not being able to speak. I held my peace even from good. And my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing, thinking, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. You ever been in that situation before? You've been around people or been hearing someone talking and you got that burning right here in your gut? And you're, you're overhearing and scripture is coming to mind. And you feel this, this unmistakable pull to be like, I, be I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. But I hear you saying things about Jesus Christ. Um, do you know who he truly is? Or one of my things that I've done before myself personally where people use our our Lord's name in vain, it's like, oh, you must you must be a Christian, huh? It's like, well, no. So, well, you keep using uh, the name Jesus Christ quite a bit. So, I thought you were one of these Christians that go to these buildings, okay? But that burn, that pull in your heart, and if you are of the Church of the Living God, you know what that's like, because that might be the Lord pulling you, showing you. It's like, hey, here's the situation. I want you to be my witness. Go over there. Go over there. Or you might be going on a walk and you might see a group of kids playing basketball and you're just walking and you and within you, you feel like this, go that way. I don't want to go by them. Go that way. And, and my heart was hot within me. That burning in your heart. That wind that drives the sail, see. And look at verse 4. Verse 4 is very important. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. See, because when we are put into a situation where we are to be a witness unto the Lord, it is when it is a when it is truly orchestrated of the Lord, when the Lord is the author of it, it brings glory unto him, not unto you. Because so many times some of these people, especially the Christians from the buildings, 
It's an opportunity for them to boast themselves to get you to go to their church building so they can get a little pat on their head by their pastor or their pastoress or whatever. But see, a, being a true witness unto our Lord Jesus Christ brings no glory unto you, all unto the Lord. Uh, and you'll run into situations like uh, even when you're silent, even when you ain't speaking, you're an accusation. Dude, what the, I, <laughs> my wife, my lovely wife, okay, who dresses like a lady, wears skirts way below the knees and dresses, right? Okay, not tight fitting dresses or skirts either, thank you. Got her hair getting long and beautiful. My wife goes out in public. Now, my wife, like myself, we, we love to track, okay? And the Lord opens up doors for us still today that we can talk to people. Praise the Lord. And we do, we love to track. But there are times when my wife and I, when my wife is out in public, she can be around people. And you should see, I've seen this, how lost women, you know, who are dressed like whores, who dress like men, they look at my wife and they give my wife some of the strangest looks. See, even when my wife doesn't speak, the Lord that is in her is testimony enough unto the lost. I've seen it. These lost women looking at my wife like, what, who, you know, giving her that weird look. Myself, I've been in places. I didn't, I haven't even said anything. Where I've been around certain people where they're like, you know, get all twitchy and nervous. It's like, huh. You know, and it's like, oh, 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 hi. <laughs> How you doing? You know, and, can, and then it's like, can I, can I offer you a gospel track? I've had guys where they're like, hoo, hoo, hoo. You know, I've had that happen to me quite a few times. But that happens. That happens. Why? Because when you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, he seals you with himself. That Holy Spirit of promise and the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost. Once saved, always saved. You have the Lord in you, okay? So the Lord in you is testimony enough unto the lost people. Where, so where it's at when you're in a store or at a farmer's market and you're not even, you're not even saying anything. Just, you know, it's like, oh, I, 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 can I see that eggplant or something like that? Or how much is that, how much is that jar of honey? 20 bucks for that big? No, thank you. you can, can I give you a gospel track? Okay. But uh, I mean, see, those of you who are safe, born again, converted of the church of living God, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. See, those of you who are fake, those of you Christians in the buildings, you're the ones who always have to instigate it, aren't you? Aren't you? And yes, we as the Church of the Living God, yes, we do instigate. But see, what is the wind? What is the wind that is driving the sail? Hmm? What is the movement? What is moving us? See, we have the church of the living God who have God within us, sealed unto the day of redemption. The Lord is the one that produces and opens up the doors, that gives opportunity. They say, I, I, you know, walk this way, literally. You know, go this way or go down that aisle. Or it's like, hey, you know, you, you usually go this way. Go another way today. And then some, something may happen. You don't know. Or sometimes you might run... So many times on walkabout, you walk by somebody, okay, that you normally wouldn't. And they say, hello. It's like, hey, how you doing? Great day. It's like, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, my Father. Beautiful day. And then it's like, that begins the snowball effect, okay? And that's not, that's not you making a video. That's not you out uh, passing out tracks, okay? You could be at a gas station, Okay, filling up your car for 50 bucks for two gallons, okay? But see, what is the wind? What is the thing that is moving that sail? What is the movement? What causes, what is the mover? Okay? 
All right. Go to, uh, while we're in Jeremiah, uh, go to Jeremiah chapter 20. And see, when the Lord is the author of the, of the moment to witness, sometimes it goes well, as we perceive, other times not. Other times not. But see, Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 8 and 9, okay? Uh, let's read verses 7 and 9, okay? O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. And the Lord does not deceive people. Jeremiah was just having a weak moment here, okay? Yes, Jeremiah, the mighty prophet of God, did have several weak moments. Yes, he did, okay? Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. You got to remember the thing about Jeremiah. At the time that God called Jeremiah to be a witness unto his own people. You got to remember this, brethren. Jeremiah was the only one preaching. Hey, Submit to uh, captivity that's coming to us from Babylon. He was the only one. Okay? And you read the book of Jeremiah. That was God's judgment on his people going into captivity. But see, the rest of the people were like, fight! Fight! But yet, Jeremiah was the only one saying, no, bow the knee, surrender to captivity because the Lord said he'll be merciful to us in, uh, and take us captive into a land that is not our own because he has to punish Jerusalem. He had to punish them. Okay, he did. He's a just and righteous God. Okay? But see, had they submitted, it would have gone a lot easier. Okay? And it did go well for some. It could, like Daniel and Ezekiel. Daniel, who was in captivity, look at what the Lord did through him. Okay? Okay, but you got to remember, Jeremiah was the only one preaching the message that he was preaching. Okay, and it was given to him of the Lord. And you had all the other false prophets itching the ears. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Okay, he was the only one. He was the only one preaching the truth. Look at verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Because what happens? Like with Moses, he goes to Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. And what does Pharaoh do? He's, and then he, he lays more burdens and more trouble on the Israelites, doesn't he? And then Moses is like, oh, Lord, why'd you have me speak? Because since I spake on the Pharaoh, he made, it made it worse. But what did the Lord say on Moses? It's like, now you're going to see what I'm going to do, Right? But let's keep reading. Verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. And here it is for us. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. Have you ever been there, brother, sister? Hmm? Hmm? You ever been out somewhere and that burn right there if you're you're at the church of the living god you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about you're lost hmm. uh take a xanax okay but you know what i'm talking about you my brethren and sisters that you can't describe it you're you're overhearing something and you're, you're the, overhearing people talking about the Lord or, or just some kind of situation. You got that burn. See, that's the wind. That's the movement. The one who is doing the movement is the Lord. Okay? And how do you know? How do you know? Because it brings no glory to you. It brings no glory to you. Well, you might say, well, the word of the Lord was a derision unto Jeremiah daily. But yeah, we have the written testimony that it was exactly the opposite, wasn't it? It was a testimony of the glory of the Lord. Everything he said through Jeremiah came to pass. Okay? At the time, at the time, it didn't seem like it, did it? 
But there again, you don't know. You don't know how the Lord is going to use that witness. You don't know. You don't know. But see, Jeremiah, he, he was the only one speaking that word. He was the only one speaking the truth in Jerusalem at that time. Oh, something that no one wanted to hear. He was the only one. Oh, and he got persecuted for it. Then he's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm getting persecuted. No one's listening, so I'm just going to shut up. But see, that fire, that burn. See, you're truly saved. You can't keep your mouth shut. You can't, can't, cannot do contrary to the scriptures while out witnessing in your daily walk. I mean, you, we do. We sin every day. But see, the wind in the sail, the wind in the sail, you can quench that spirit. You got to be careful with that. How many of you have had that in your heart, that burn, and didn't act on it? We'll talk more about that in the other video, okay? But most of the time, yes. It seems to us that it doesn't work out, right? Go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 1. Habakkuk, chapter, chapter 1, okay? <laughs> As my blessed wife used to say, Habakkuk, no. <laughs> Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. On to verse 4, excuse me. Don't you feel like this sometimes, brother, sister, right? O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou shew me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Does seem like that, doesn't it? Does seem like our witness is vanity, isn't it? But you gotta, like I like to use the analogy of the Titanic, okay? The Titanic, sunk by the Jesuits, is going down. But remember those brave men who were putting coals in the boilers as long as they could to keep lights on. Hmm? Remember that. Remember that. And yes, the lights went out eventually, and the ship did sink. We're aboard the Titanic, people. Are you still shoveling that coal? Hmm? Or do you, are you one of these who makes uh, upteenth excuses? Okay? And then, now go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Okay? Whether they will hear or whether they for, will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Okay? Uh, not limitations, Brad. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. We want verses <laughs> 6 on to verse 8. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Be not afraid of the guy who smacks the, the tracks out of your hand, or kicks gravel at you, or spits at your feet. Huh? Or tries to douse you with pop, okay? Or postures to you. Be afraid of them. Now, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Ha, <laughs> Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shall speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Now, in context, dispensationally, doctrinally, this is for the children of Israel in the dispensation under the law. But what we can take away from this for our instruction in righteousness is just this. If the Lord is the one pushing that sail 
in an opportunity to witness, whether it's by you speaking his words, okay, or whether it's by action, how you behave in a certain situation, okay, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Think about this. Every person that the Lord has given a chance to hear or to be witness unto him through you, his vessel. Every single one of those people who have denied that, have rejected that, they're going to give an account for that. The Lord is going to say to them, I sent my witnesses to you, who you mocked, who you ignored, who you kicked gravel at. You smacked the tracks out of their hands and threatened them. Okay, that was my witness, but you didn't hear it. But then again, maybe there's a Saul somewhere around who might see that. You don't know. You don't know. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give. There are some opportunities that the Lord will open, and if you do not act upon those opportunities, you'll lose them forever. I can't tell you, I don't want to tell you about the many times when I know, looking back, that I know that the Lord was opening a door and because I was too cowardly or didn't have faith on him enough. Because what do you say? It's like, well, I can't, I can't. You're right. You can't. Well, I, I, I can't speak. I can't. Who made man's lips? Like he said to Moses. Moses, who is uh, uh, debating with the Lord at the bush. Like, Lord, I, I can't. I'm not eloquent. Who made, who made your lips? Who made man's lips? I did. I'll be with your lips. You're good. Go. It's like, Lord, send them. look, Moses, you're going, whether you like it or not. Okay? You, you want some? I'll, I'll give you Aaron. Okay? But you're going. You're going. Okay? There have been times when I know for, a, for certain that the Lord was, was like, Brad, come on. And I didn't take it. Hopefully the Lord will use another of the Church of the Living God for those moments. But there are times like that that you will have. Haven't you, brother? Haven't you, sister? There have been times when you know that you know that you know that it was the Lord and you didn't take it. I can't do that. I, I don't know. You're right. You don't. That's why, number one, whenever you whenever you, you go out to your mailbox, you go to take out your trash. Carry a sword. God, I, I've, how many times have I said this? Guys, men, you carry your wallet and you carry your car keys. Carry a sword. Women, some of you carry purses, okay? You got a whole bag of stuff. You got a copy of the scriptures in there? Well, I don't got one small. Shh. Hush. Hush. Be prepared. Be instant in season, out of season. Always have a sword. I, I don't care if you're going out to get the mail, going out to put out the trash, Walking the dog. I don't care. Well, I'm just going out for a minute. You don't know what's going to happen in that minute. Some people, uh, a life can change in just a minute. Can it? Things can happen in just a minute. Some people could live a lifetime in a minute. Can't they? You don't know. You don't know. I'm, I'm adamant about that because that happened to me one time. When the Lord opened up a situation, and I was still very much a babe, but the Lord opened up a door 
and I wasn't prepared. I didn't have a sword on me. That was, forgive me for this foolishness in speaking. That was the last time that ever happened. That was the last time. I never forgot that. Because that was an opportunity where the enemy was able to boast themselves. It's like, ha, ha, ha. And back then, I didn't know the difference between a Christian and those of the Church of the Living God. I didn't know, I didn't know that kind of stuff. Okay? I didn't. Okay? But then the, the enemy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this Christian, he, he, he doesn't know anything. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. I didn't have the sword on me. I wasn't armed. Okay? And some like to argue, well, what if you're not armed? What if you're Are you reading the scriptures every day? Hmm? Are you putting those things on file so the Lord could use it at his will? You gotta stop making excuses. You don't know how the Lord is going to use you, but he will use you. He has not called you to sit on your duff doing nothing, okay? He is the wind pushing the sail. You're the sail, and he's the wind. He is the movement, okay? But see, when the movement comes of man, man gets the glory. They get the people to go to their stupid church buildings. So they can line their pocketbook and lie to them. God loves you. Now give us your tithe. Okay? Whether they will hear, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, you don't know how the Lord's going to use it. He is the one who does the moving. Okay? Now... Go to Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 25 on to verse 27. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. Thou shalt be dumb, not being able to speak, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. There are so many things out there that you can do, that you can do yourself, right? Like you have a, a little list, you know, a little go-to list in witnessing, and you... It, that's not organic. That's not how true witnessing unto the Lord works. That's why door-to-door -door stuff is doesn't work. Okay? And, you know, you see the Baptist guys like the Andersnake people, you know, just still doing door-to-door. -door. You see, well, with the uh, psychological operation that the Jesuits started, it's different nowadays. But it's like, that, that's mechanical. That's man. That's not organic. That's not god breathe. Okay, it's not. It's not. What happens when you go knocking door to door? Okay, and you gotta give, you gotta give the guy his credit. You know, his holiness from Maine. He did a whole thing about you know about door to door witnessing. You gotta give that guy. <laughs> you gotta give him his credit. Okay, you do about the the joke that the door to door thing is. Okay, you, you really do because what does that prove? I mean, what does that do? That's man. That's man. That's flesh. Being a true witness unto our Lord. It's a beautiful woman. A lady. Standing there. Checking the price on a loaf of bread. And having another woman looking at her with like. You disgust. And just looking at her. And it's like. You go up to her, put my arm on, and it's like, and I look at this woman, and she looks at me and kind of walks away. It's like, my wife's like, what's, she's, my wife's like, what? I was like, nothing. Didn't even mention it. I've seen that. I've seen that. Why is that? Because we have the witness within ourselves, brethren. We have the Lord in us. We have the Lord in us. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Okay? Uh, Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Probably one of the best verses on this that we can go to. Second Peter chapter 1. Where are you going, Brad? 
Second Peter chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Rise in your hearts? The day star, that's our Lord Jesus Christ. We read in Jeremiah and Psalms too, about the heart burning. Hmm? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Oh, private interpretation. Like you got to go to a Jesuit priest in order to understand what the scriptures mean. Or you got to go to some Christian's seminar. Or you got to pay uh, uploads of money to get a, a certain CD or book to understand a certain... That's nonsense. That's people making merchandise of you. Okay? That's like guys like Shepherd's Chapel did. You know, hey, you want to understand what this is truly saying? Give us $20. We'll give you this disc. Okay? <laughs> or some of the Ruckmanites. Hey, you really want to know what Scripture says? Give us $100. We'll give you one of his books. Okay? Or, you really want to know what this is? Hey, come to my seminar for upwards to $1,000 a head. You know, Eric John Phelps, for his, some of his stuff, was charging outrageous. Amount. <laughs> okay? That's man. That's flesh. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Oh boy! But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, the wind that pushes the sail. The wind that pushes the sail. And, go, and now go to the Old Testament, okay? You know, there are those out there who want to discount the Old Testament for, oh, and I've seen it too. Uh, they, they, you know, you can't go to the Old Testament for anything, all right? There's so much instruction and righteousness in the Old Testament for us, it's not even funny. And you got these Christians who uh, you say, you don't need to go to the Old Testament. Why are you going to the... Say, shut up, you Jesuit provincial smooth-talking dragon. Okay? You, you stay away from the Old Testament as the church of the living God. You're crippling yourself. Okay? A lot of instruction and righteousness for us in here. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16 on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain, like what the Christians who say, Come to our church so we can teach you truth. Where are you sending them? Like the one lady, excuse me, the one woman said to me who was sitting at that prayer station on the, uh, far, at the farmer's market, that little devil witch. Like, where are you sending them? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. She's like, yeah, yeah, but, but what happens when the internet goes out? Oh, you saw what I was doing, didn't you? What, am, what are we doing right here, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, but where are you sending them? They need us. Ah, you little coadjutor pond scum. You're, where are you getting that? Where are they getting that? Got to get them church. You got to get them to the buildings. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God doesn't care about these certain things. You're going to extremes. Come to our church building so we can teach you truth. What's the wind in that sail? Uh, I liken that wind as flatulence. It's not the God, the God of the scriptures. It's not our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the Holy Ghost. No. 
that that wind that drives these Christians in the building, uh, that's that's flatulence. That's that kind of wind, and it stinks. <gasps> Brad, oh sh shush, shush. You really, around here they had uh, Halloween decorations out uh, <laughs> at the end of August around here, which they haven't done before. People are being prepared for the evil to come. And we are few. But brethren, we gotta get we gotta do what the Lord would have us to do. If you're gonna tell me that the Lord wants you to just sit there on your duff and do nothing, you lie. And your breath stink. I can smell it over here. Are you afraid? That's what it is, isn't it? That's what it is, isn't it? You're afraid. You're afraid of men? Is that what it is? You doubt yourself? Good! Praise the Lord! You're supposed to. You're not supposed to have faith in yourself. Your faith is supposed to be... See, that's what the easy believism does. You have faith in yourself because you just believe. You think I got faith in any of this? God, see, that's what all these devils have. They have faith in this. There's something wrong with you. That, yes, be, amen, I can't do this. I can't speak. I, I can't be around. You're right, you can't. But the Lord who is in you, that wind in the sails, you can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you, right? You see, the Christians trivialize that, don't they? Playtime's over, boy. Gotta do something. Gotta do something. Okay? You gotta do something. And and let's go down now to verses 21 and 22 in Jeremiah chapter 23. And these, you know, these, these Christians in the building, God loves you. Yeah, yeah. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. God's not mad at you. God loves you unconditionally, even though you reject his son. God loves you unconditionally. Yeah, yeah. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, I'm a good person. Yeah. No evil shall come upon you. That, verse 17, is what the Christians in the buildings are feeding these lost people. And a lot of the lost people, the atheists, do have seem to have brains enough. It's like, come on, man. But then again, the downtrodden and the broken who need to hear the true gospel, one of them gets to them before one of we do. 21 and 20, uh, verses 21 on to verse 22 in Jeremiah 23. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. The mark of a false prophet. They run to be in the forefront. They want to be the center of attention. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. You want to really tick off one of these devils? Ignore them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a little jerk out there that I've thought about making videos against. But that would just, that would just light the fire. He'd love every second of it. I'm not even going to give him the uh, satisfaction of saying his name. And that really irritates him, too. They want that notoriety. See, I failed at it. Yes, I have. But see, the false prophet runs. Look at me. Look at me. Here I am. I'm the superstar. Yeah. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Hmm. Verse 23 and 24. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? See, you shrinking from doing something from the Lord 
When you say I can't do it, or I, I, or you get scared, it's it's a form of self uh, glorification, dear friend. Are you aware of that? And it shows that you have no faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. I do have faith. Okay. Act on it. Okay. Faith, dear brethren. It's not this thing that just makes you sit on your butt warming a chair with your rear end. Okay? Faith leads to trust. Trust. And a trust that leads to action of getting out of the boat. I'm going to deal with that in the other videos. Okay? You got to stop making excuses. Okay, you might not make videos. You might not pass out tracks. You can go on a walk. I can't go on a walk. How many excuses are you going to make? You know who hides behind excuses, don't you? Lost people. Oh, it's someone else's fault. What are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do? Titus. What did Titus? What did Titus? Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. We want verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain, unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Circumcision, those who are of the law want to get people under the law. Here on YouTube, Mark the Messenger and many other people. Uh, they might not be wanting to bring them under the Ten, uh, the Ten Commandments or the Law of Moses, but they want to bring them under the law of their church building, under the laws of Catholicism, okay? Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy, for filthy money lucre's sake. Subvert. Yes, subverting people's souls, speaking words to no profit. Keeping the law today are words of no profit as pertaining to your salvation. Okay? You don't keep the law today to be saved or stay saved. Those are words to no profit for today. Okay? And you get people who want to bring you under the law, work salvation, that's words to no profit. That's subverting people. Okay? One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Whoa! Cretans, a kindred, are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies? Paul here singled out a kindred, the Cretans, as liars, evil beasts, slow bellies? Oh boy! Oh, boy. <laughs> this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn, away, turn from the truth unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess, oh, that they know God. But in works they deny him. Being abominable, abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. See, we've been called unto good works not to be saved or to stay saved. Some of these hyper-Calvinists that I don't even pray, I don't even witness because it's all been ordained, elect and non-elect, what's the point? Yeah. Some of them, the easy believism, I don't even pray. Just, if you're going to pray, just say, hey, thanks for saving a special one like me because I just believe because I'm such a catch. Yeah. Yeah. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. 
And you know, when you go to Ephesians chapter 2, which they like to quote, but they only quote two verses. They don't quote verse 10. Uh, Ephesians 2 verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Very difficult to understand, I know, right? <laughs> and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works. The works of the law is what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Lest any man should boast. And, the, and, and you twist this to the easy believism. They boast. Well, I'm saved because I just believe. Okay? Or you got some idiots out there who can who can mutter something. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. And because they can say that, they're saved, right? Uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. <laughs> Up the dosage there, bud. Okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Oh, oh, this is good. Beg your pardon. Zechariah chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me, not against me. Zechariah chapter 4, just two verses. Verses 6 on to verse 7. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, not by what you do, but by my lowercase s, spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, by that which he imparts. Okay, This is in a different dispensation under the law, where no eternal security was there. Okay, But see, the Lord that is in us, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ dwells within us, okay? His spirit will guide us and lead us, okay? All right? You got to remember, this says my spirit, lowercase s, something that he imparts. This was in a dispensation where there was no eternal security, where God was not a permanent resident within the believer, okay? You got to remember that, okay? But for our instruction in righteousness, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And today... Not by what you do, but by the Lord himself, which is the wind in that sail. In verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain? What's your mountain? Oh, you can't speak, huh? Or oh, you're scared of people. I don't get that. But hey, hey, there are some that are, that are, okay? You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. Bring a tear to my glass eye. I love you, brother or sister. Quit making excuses. Pray to the Lord. Uh, look, I can tell you that the Lord has called you to something. Okay? Whatever it is. Like I said, maybe not videos. Maybe not passing out tracks. Okay. Great. Fine and dandy. Bravo. Bravo. Are you afraid to figure out that what that is? Or do you know what that is and just want to glorify yourself and not trust the Lord? Who art thou, O great mountain before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto Also, too, let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 10, which is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Still under the law. Yes. Yes. But, like, okay, this is instruction in righteousness. Okay? Instruction in righteousness, how we are to live. Okay? Where doctrine is how we are made right. 
salvifically within that dispensation. Okay, we can find out all kinds of instruction and righteousness, how to live certain ways as the church of the living God within the Old Testament. Yes, we can. Doctrinally, doctrine is how someone is made right within that certain dispensation. Okay, that's doctrine, salvifically. Okay, all right. Things that pertain unto our salvation, unto our sanctification within the dispensation. Okay? But Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 on to verse 20. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Amen. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. And harmless as doves. Okay? But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in the synagogues. And this is more for the time of Jacob's trouble that he's referring to, okay? And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And we also see verse 18, Paul was brought before governors and kings, okay? All right? But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And that holds true for us today. That's why I'm against when you're out, you know, walking, you know, you, you carry a sword. But I've known, I've heard of people having like a little like, you know, cheat sheet with, okay, these are the verses that we use if we get a chance to witness. That's not organic. That's program. That's not spont spontaneous. It's not, it's not driven by the wind, the spirit. That's not the movement of the Lord. Okay. Be prepared. Have a sword on you. Yeah. But these prepared statements, no, no. That's mechanical, okay? And also now, while we're here, go to John chapter 3, just one verse. John chapter 3, okay? John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh? And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the capital S spirit. You don't know what the Lord has called you to do? Have you asked him? Has he shown you and you're too scared to get out of that boat? Time is running out, people. You, you are aware of that, right? Time is running out. You got too many King James Bible-believing Christians who are reverting back to only this. Brother, sister, you think this is all that we do? <laughs> no, this is not it. Yes, this is part of it, but this is not it. And being in this calling that, we, that I have, that my wife also shares in as a help meet. Okay? I tell you, that, that sweet little woman out there. <laughs> uh, very creative. Okay? But this is not it. You know, like, like was said in the one previous video, uh, I think that was done on Friday uh, on the other channel. Um, you know, there comes a time when you got to turn this thing off. And you got to be out there. We are... In the world. We're not of the world. Okay? John chapter 8, uh, John chapter 3, verse 8 again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest not the sound thereof. And thou hearest the sound thereof, excuse me. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Okay? And go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Almost done. John, one second, brother. John chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. 
But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And elsewhere in the book of John, uh, he says that the Father will send the Comforter unto you. Well, so which one is it? Jesus is the Father, okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? All right, one God, all right? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment because he lives in you. Like I've said, you know, even when you don't say anything, you're an accusation. <laughs> and then drop a couple of F-bombs at me and stuff like this. What? What? What, you know? Okay? Of sin. Because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father, and ye see me no more. What was that? Rene Roland once said that this, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict of sin. Aha! Yeah, a woman teaching, and she says that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict of sin. She was right in her case, because she's not saved. And you're right, Miss Roland. The Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin, because you don't have the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, living within you. I've never forgotten that. It was like, up. Oh, Okay, woman teaching. <laughs> Good luck at the great white throne of judgment, okay? I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And shall shew it unto you. See, being a true witness. Whether it be in word. Because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Or whether it be by you. And a circumstance of how you react. Without saying anything. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. See, being a true witness is no glory unto you. It's unto the Lord. And when you got these Christians talking about getting you in your building or telling you just believe, it's a glory unto them. I'm saved because I just believe. I, you just believe. Just believe. And you're saved. It's a glory unto them. You easy believism heretics, you have no idea what the grace of God truly really means. Because you have saved yourself. I could only I, I could only hope what would happen if you truly were saved and were broken contrite and had fear of him and called upon his name and he truly saved you. No. No. What could the Lord do through you? What would he? We'll never know with some of them. And Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Verses 29 and verse 30. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Now you got the charismatic who said, See, the sign gifts are still available for today. Uh, all you got to do is answer that. Uh, very simple. Just one verse. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? That was Acts chapter 4. 4 is a little bit before Acts chapter 7. Okay? The gospel at that time was being presented primarily, specifically onto the Jews only. Okay? 
until Acts chapter 7 when Jewry in a hole rejected the gospel by killing Stephen. Then you see the Gentiles brought in. It was this dispensation by grace through faith because the sacrifice for sins was made already with our with the death burial and resurrection of our lord jesus christ okay that was already there it was this dispensation but our lord was going to the jew first the sign gifts you deceive charismatic are not for today okay okay they were why aren't you in hospitals healing people hmm why aren't you at uh, MS places and healing them? Hmm? Why aren't you feeding the poor? But no, you're doing your uh, NLP uh, Jesuit mind tricks on people and using smoke and mirrors to line your own pocketbook. <laughs> or to exalt yourself. Well, I've seen the Lord. He appeared right in front of me, mate. I've seen the Lord. You've seen the devil. You ain't seen God. Sign gifts are not for today. Now go back to Acts. Acts chapter 5 and we will be done. Verses 27 on to verse 29. And when they had brought them, they set them... Up, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring in this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Okay? Brethren, you, we got to remember, we are called to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Okay? We have the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? You as a woman, okay, a woman is not supposed to teach and to preach, but a woman can pass out tracts. A woman could have a, be put into a situation where she can give a witness. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that you you women out there, don't be like, well, I'm a woman. You say I can't. You're not supposed to preach and teach. You're not supposed to usurp authority over a man. But that doesn't mean that the Lord isn't going to orchestrate a circumstance for you to be a witness unto him amongst lost people. Okay? That doesn't mean that you can't open up a coffee can and put a track in there. Okay? That doesn't mean that. All right? You got to stop making these excuses. Time is short. Time is so short, brethren. And the enemy is out there doing their part. Okay? And way too many have just recluse, are like being recluses and just letting their fingers doing the talking. Well, this has its purpose. Yes! This isn't it. This isn't it. So the movement in witnessing is the movement of the Lord, not the movement of men. Because the movement of the Lord will always, always, even to your detriment, praise the Lord, will bring him glory. Because you know what? When you got a guy who looked to be about 6'3", who smacks the tracks out of your hand and threatens you, and you're like, hey, you know what? You're going to have to give an account of yourself to the Lord. Take, take it easy, buddy. You just look at him and walk away. It's a testimony. You got people kicking gravel at you. It's like, whoa. Hey, man. You don't have to give an account of yourself. Or we'll try to throw a pop at you. How you react in that situation. Okay? And in those situations that weren't instigated by what you did, 
But the Lord set it up. And then the Lord sets it up, and then it seems to backfire on you, right? It's like, whoa, Lord, I, I, I went, okay, you, I felt, okay, you, this was you. But Lord, the, the guy threw dung on me. He just attacked me. I, you don't know how that worked in that person who attacked you. Obviously, it did something, right? So. And if it's a movement of man, if it's a movement of man, excuse me, excuse me, this is what gets the glory. It's this that brings it to a building. That's it for part one. Thank you for watching this if you do. You know, you don't take it upon yourself to do these things. You go to the Lord. You go to the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do to witness for you? And then wait on him for his answer because God does answer prayer. I'm not one of these that says God doesn't answer prayer. God always answers prayer for those who are his. Might not be the answer you like. Might be a yay, maybe a nay, it may be silence. But God always answers prayer, people, for those who are his. Okay? Like I said, these, these videos have nothing to do where, with your salvation. These videos are for the church of the living God to... Come on! Move on. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your circumstances is. I don't care what excuses you want to make. The Lord has called you to something. Get on your knees and find it. Or has he shown it to you? The one who is the movement, the one who that does the movement, the wind in the sail, is the Lord. When it's the wind of man, which is flatulence, it only benefits man. Not to say that when being moved of the Lord uh, doesn't, you know, accrue a benefit unto us. It does. Spiritually. Yes. Sometimes carnally. Yes. But at the main point... It's for the Lord. And these devils out there, they're serving their God of this world, little G, God, Lucifer, well. And where are those who are of the church of the living God? Oh, fighting amongst themselves about who's the better preacher. <laughs> or, or, or arguing amongst themselves about what clique they belong to. And I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of this. I'm going to get this uploaded. This uh, video got done a little bit later than I had anticipated. Got a chance to speak to a brother today that we just kept missing each other. It, it was, oh, it was, but we got a chance to speak today. So thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. And Lord willing, we will see you in the next video where we talk about action. So, thank you. I love you.